Well, good afternoon, folks. I hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, just time for our evening devotional. So let's bow our heads, ask the Lord to be with us, and then we'll get into our topic for the evening. Father in heaven, I thank you for the beauty of your nature, for being able to spend this afternoon in the great outdoors and in the tundra and enjoying the, the sunshine and even getting into a little snow. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will just uh, bless as we spend a few moments uh, in your word and in contemplation and listening to the pen of inspiration. I ask that you will bless and guide and direct uh, and that we will hear you speak directly to us wonderful words of life this afternoon. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin today by reading a little passage from Psalm, Psalm 25, verse 12. And here's what it says. Who is the man that the Lord, that fears the Lord? He shall teach him the way he chooses. So that wonderful passage tells you and I that if we fear the Lord, he will direct us. He will send us in his path. He will teach us the way that we need to go. We will not have to wonder where we will go. We will hear the Lord saying to us, this is the way, walk ye in it. And that is wonderful news for you and I living in a world where there are voices taking us in millions of different directions and we want to be going in the one direction, the still small path that leads heavenwards. I'd like to read a little from Acts of the Apostles today, Acts of the Apostles, page 471. And here's what it says. The apostle exalted Christ before his friends as the only one by whom God had created all things and by whom he had wrought out their redemption. He declared that the hand that sustains the world in space and holds their orderly arrangements and tireless activity um, all things throughout the universe of, of God that the hand that was nailed to the cross was the hand that was nailed to the cross for them. By him were all things created, Paul wrote, that are in heaven, that are in earth, that are visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And today, as I look around at the beautiful nature that I've been able to be in uh, this afternoon, uh, I am just reminded of the beauty of of creation and and if we can get out uh, and enjoy nature and enjoy these things you just feel a close presence with the master and you can see his beauty in his creation the son of god stooped to uplift the fallen for this he left the sinless world on high the ninety and nine that loved him and came to this earth to be wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities isaiah 53 5. He was in all things made like his brother, and he became flesh as we are. He knew what it meant to be hungry and thirsty and weary. He was sustained by food and refreshed by sleep. He was a stranger and a sojourner on earth in the world, but not of the world. Tempted and tried as men and women are today, uh, yet living a life of free from sin. Tender, compassionate, sympathetic, wherever considerate of others. He represented the character of God. The Word was made flesh, and the Word dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14. Surrounded by the practices and influence of heathenism, the Colossians believers were in danger of being drawn away from the simplicity of the gospel, and Paul warned them against this and pointed them to Christ as the only safe guide. Uh, that is the, really the main point of what I wanted to share today, uh, we are surrounded by so much information and people are trying to, to pull us this way and that way and, and take us away from the simplicity of the gospel as it is found in Christ. I know it's a broken record coming out of me, but it will be until Jesus comes back. Get into the word. When you're in the word, look for Jesus. Don't get caught on side points and side theories and all the things that might be floating around. Stick to Jesus as the only safe guide. Don't let other things pull you this way and that way so you know everything that will happen at the end, but not the one making it all happen. I would that ye know, he wrote, what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be comforted and knit together in love and unto all the riches and the full assurance and understanding and acknowledgement of the mystery of God, the Father, and of Jesus Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures, all the wisdom, 
and all the knowledge. Jesus here is talking directly to you and I, to the Laodicean church at the very last days. And he's saying, I would that you would know me and the Father and our glory and our love and our beauty. Let us today take a few minutes to contemplate the life of Christ, the great act and sacrifice that purchased our salvation. Let us lay hold to the foot of the cross, claim the shed blood and the merits of Christ on Calvary so we can be delivered, we can live in the hope and the beauty of God's recreation in our lives, and we can call others into a saving relationship, into the light and the glory and the majesty of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you today for these few words from Acts of the Apostles, Lord. It's important for us to remember that there are so many things that there may not be an issue with uh, in Christianity and even in our own church. But if we let ourselves spend all of our time digging in those directions, we may lose sight of the one person we must know if we would be in glory one day. Lord, keep us near to you. Keep us near uh, through the Holy Spirit. Draw us near to Jesus every day. Help us to live a life of surrender, I plead in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, folks, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.